Hello and welcome to the show and welcome to this week's BMNG Downhill Chaos. We start with the Toyota Celica. Quite a few people wanted to see me drive this down here, so I thought, I thought I'd give it a go. It has the worst handbrake of any car. It is absolutely useless. The only way I could get it stopped here long enough was to put it into manual uh, and then hold the brake and then release, uh, change it back to automatic before I started and release the handbrake and then I left the handbrake on because it wouldn't turn off. This car is not very good at staying still on a very small slope. Um, yeah, the handbrake is absolutely useless uh, on this car. However, it is a surprisingly good uh, off-road vehicle. It deals with the bumps a hell of a lot better. You saw it got around that first corner without any problems, which is amazing considering all the problems I had last week. It is front-wheel drive and understeer was a bit of a problem. <laughs> You see, I can get around this corner, I'll just boot it and I'll be fine, uh, forgetting that it was front wheel drive and that it wouldn't be. Uh, and now I've got a, a remodelled version at the, well, at the front is a remodelled version, at the back is a crashed version. Of course, this is still a road car and while it can deal with some of the bumps, the large jumps could be a little bit problematic. Uh, this, this sort of this tabletop one wasn't too bad. Okay, you could take a slightly heavy landing. There was a hidden bump a little bit further down. It's kind of hidden by the shadows. It's very, very hard to see uh, on, on the video. That once you hit it, it would just launch this car. Uh, all of the other bumps, it wasn't too bad on. It was just this one in particular that uh, would send the car flying. And because the, this, this sort of pain in the ass bump was hidden behind another jump, you can kind of landing from this jump, you might land a little bit awkwardly. And then all of a sudden, you're on the next one and ooh, we very very nearly rolled it and uh, then a corner later we did roll it uh, I wasn't expecting to see that from the uh, the Celica not a not a particularly high it's a sports car so not a particularly high center of mass uh, just got to give the, the apex of the corner a little bit more space than that as you can see it is a very steep uh, sort of a large gradient change uh, on that corner next next attempt I'm still not sure quite what I caught the back of the car on in this one I'm not sure if it was the rocks or if I dangled the wheel sort of slightly over the edge of the cliff that caused the back wheel to be at at, a, at an angle that it shouldn't be I'm not an expert but I'd say that was pretty screwed up <laughs> yeah handling not so good when your wheel is pointing that way there's a lot of positive camber and toe I can't remember which way round it is toe out I think I'm not sure on that one though um, further down I started getting the hang of the opening section uh, the next jump was there goes a wheel I don't <laughs> still not sure what caused the wheel to ping off yeah landing of the jumps was proving a little bit problematic unsurprising really when you consider what I'm trying to get a Celica to do uh, this is not a normal uh, <laughs> normal road for a car such as this and then I couldn't stop it from sliding down the mountain some more the wheel is, has vanished uh, has, has long since gone this first quarter really wasn't a particular problem with this car I did I never had any problems through the first corner I did however get things a little bit wrong uh, for the next bit I may have carried a bit too much speed and thought ah, I'll be fine I'll just keep flat out and no no that doesn't necessarily work there uh, the, from the front the car looks absolutely fine from the now that's that's quite a lot more uh, positive camber <laughs> Amazingly, the car still drove fine. In fact, this handled better than the previous uh, sort of smash up of that rear wheel. It was still fairly drivable. Um, of course, it was never going to be particularly fast, and every so often it would suddenly decide it wanted to go sideways. Um, but yeah, I was surprised how well that drove considering the angle that the wheel. That's. Yeah, that's definitely very, very broken. This jump was causing some more problems for me uh, on, on the landing. It was just bouncing the car a little bit too much. Because you are going pretty fast down there, and this is a very, very tight corner, I couldn't stop the car in time. Then once it starts bouncing, I couldn't really do very much. Again, it's starting bouncing. I'm trying to recover it, trying to recover it. I'm on the brakes. Can't stop it in time before it clatters into a tree and loses quite a lot of the bodywork. Uh, one of the few times actually the front of the car was uh, was pretty most of the damage to this car was done on the back of it the front of the car on a lot of occasions got away with got away with things the the tiny mound of dirt caused some problems as uh, <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know there's there's a i think from what from what i've looked at on the map there is a small mound of dirt hidden behind a bush that uh, that you can clip on that corner and annoyingly it's right on the line that i want to take i want to take that line through there and it just causes the car to roll 
again landing on the jump it's <laughs> yeah it gets bounce it might be a little bit similar with the supercar we had last week just a little bit soft suspension causing the car to bounce and ping around up here again same story we come into the braking zone and the car just starts bouncing a little bit i said this car does deal with the bumps remarkably well uh, much better than quite a few of the road cars that we had down here if uh, however i should say if you do get it started on kind of bouncing you cannot stop the damn thing i managed um Still not entirely sure how that one worked for the uh, for, for rolling the car. Um, yeah, like, like the car was turning the wrong way for the bank to sort of cause it to roll in some way. That was, it was a bit of a funny roll, but uh, yeah, the sneaker ended up on its roof a few times in this. After a while, though, I got a clean run with this car. I've said it before, this is an excellent, excellent car. Huge fun to drive on this game. Probably one of the best handling cars uh, that there is. I, I would highly recommend you give this car a download and give it a try. It's, it's a lot of fun, even on a place like this that it's not really designed for. It still was remarkably good fun. As ever, all the links to the mods that I use in these videos shall be uh, in the description. The first section really wasn't a problem for this car. Eh, the occasional mistake from me. Uh, saw it in the, the in the bush and that little mound caused, <laughs> caused it to roll once. But on the most part, yeah, this opening section wasn't too bad. This jump, if you hang to the left, you don't. it's not really a jump anymore. Uh, and if you kind of kept to the left as well for the next bit, the bump wasn't so bad. Uh, so on this attempt, things were going pretty smoothly uh, through the first section. Got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bounce coming into this corner, but managed to kind of catch in time. This is the scary place. Will the Celica survive? Well, the back of the car is bouncing all over the place, but it got stopped and it just about got turned. Uh, I started to put the power down, and then, then, it, then there was some understeer. This corner here is the other problematic one, uh, with just hitting bumps and then <laughs> then having no brakes and not being able to stop. But the Celica made it uh, to the finish line. And uh, from the front, it looks remarkably intact. There's that <laughs> you wouldn't know. I mean, from the back, there's a we may have broken the boot lid slightly, but uh, the rest of the car, no, it survived the course very, very well. Uh, was good fun to drive down here. Very easy to drive down here as well. Excellent handling uh, on this car. Occasional understeery incident, and as ever, it's a road car uh, driven on an off-road course. From that angle, it looks kind of not too broken. Ignore the jumpy boot though. Uh, up next we have got the six-wheel drive uh, D-series pickup truck because uh, people wanted to see this and it sounded pretty mental. Uh, this runs the same engine as the the one that I ran last week, the big off-road one. Not quite the the, the same uh, ride height, not quite, the, not quite as high centre of mass. However, it is quite a bit heavier, or at least it's certainly a lot more sluggish off the line. Um, I, I would guess it's the weight of, of the extra wheels. Deals with the bumps pretty damn well. Handles better than I expected, as you can see by this corner. I was kind of expecting it to handle like a boat. It turns out you can chuck it into the corner quite well, and I completely got it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly surprisingly good handling, surprisingly agile, considering this is a... I'm, I think it's longer. It's got to be longer, surely, than, than the normal pickup truck. Again, the mysterious mound caused it to have an accident. Don't worry, that's not your YouTube video glitching out. My game just couldn't quite decide what to do with it and all the frame rate died. Um, yeah, I, the, the wing mirror magically pings off. I wondered what that was when I was when I was playing it. I thought something weird happened there. It was the wing mirror. That's what that's what went on. Uh, bumpy corner entrances caused some problems for this. This is one of the, the problems with the longer wheelbase on this vehicle. If it does sort of start bouncing, at the front of the car can can go a little bit crazy on uh, on some of these bumps, which uh, was a little bit of a problem. Again, if you clip the inside inside of the, the corner a little bit too much, then you can roll this as well. Certainly not as bad as the the other version of the pickup truck, and won't be as bad as some of the, the bigger SUVs. Not got quite the same ride height. However, it does have enough ride height and good enough suspension to deal with most of the bumps on this course. As I said with all these vehicles, um, they they tend to deal with bumps fairly well up until a point, and then that point they start bouncing. And when they start bouncing, that's when you have a big crash. So, <laughs> And it was also very hard to kind of almost find the point where they start bouncing. It's a little bit random in some ways. The first corner was never really a problem uh, with with this vehicle, which is surprising, uh, considering all the issues I, I had last week with it. Uh, I, got, I got away without running over the mound that time. They're fairly good through these corners. 
It is quite sluggish on the acceleration front, though. It is not the fastest at getting in between corners. Gets round the corners okay, and yeah, it doesn't have too. I don't have to be as careful at ro with rolling this one. I mean, there's not such the same risk of rolling this vehicle as there is with the other D series, but it doesn't have quite the acceleration. Just a little bit sluggish at in between corners. As ever, got to be careful on on some of the landings of the jumps. Again, I just don't want the car for whatever reason the way this, the way this game works. I don't want the thing to be to be bouncing like that for example uh, you saw how much the front of the vehicle lifted up that seemed to be the problem this week really uh, not the first corner it's just bouncy suspension got a pretty awkward landing on the second jump with this one sort of rocking from side to side got away with it though managed to get it stopped brakes are pretty good um, although that might be to do with the fact that it's not going as fast in the first place if that makes sense to you uh, maybe overshot the corner a little bit uh, on that turn but again got away with it and the six wheel drive vehicle is across the line damage wise yeah we bent the went the bonnet a little bit but uh nah, this vehicle is perfectly happy uh with dealing dealing with this kind of terrain i would imagine that that bonnet damage is only from that second jump which the landing was uh, a little bit rough on i also love how bright the <laughs> the brake lights are look at the building um that's this has got the sh the, the brightest brake lights of any of, <laughs> of any car our third and final vehicle for today is the scarab buggy uh, again lots of people wanted to see this one uh, driven down the course and this is expected to be pretty damn quick handbrake nah <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to work on this one it's weird that like, the handbrake would grip and then decide now we're going to let go and then it would shunt you forwards a little bit then it would grip and then it would stop uh, this is a fast vehicle, very fast accelerating, so fast it caught me out into the first corner and I got clotheslined by a tree. Yeah, this is mighty fast accelerating. Four wheel drive, this is the, the one with normal steering, there is a four wheel steering one that we may come to later on uh, in the series. Over the jump and I was having a little bit of problem lining this vehicle up because it is so wide, I ended up too far to the right. If you are too far to the right on that jump, you roll it. I'm not sure quite what causes it to roll, but that's what happens. And with this vehicle being incredibly wide, uh, it was very easy to do that. Uh, I may have been a bit too brave, uh, braked far too late, and now that I was never going to stop that one. Uh, now we, we may have we've spent quite a lot of time on our roof <laughs> with this vehicle. Uh, not bad handling. I will say that the previous open wheel vehicle I've driven, the the buggy, oh, what was it called? I've forgotten the name of the vehicle now, um, was a bit of a pain to drive. It was a bit fiddly, whereas this one's a lot better. I did manage to make uh, almost a try. I, I don't quite know what you... <laughs> it's broken, basically. Uh, <laughs> interesting handling... Hand, hand, the bleh, hold on. Handling characteristics. There we go. Um, it's late. I'm tired. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> when it's like that I bent the front wheel but still it carried on and still somehow it sort of drove briefly I'm not sure on that one either eventually we ended up in a ditch upside down but um, it's it kept on going with one of the rear wheels kind of in the engine yeah um, I might, might have broken it the first corner was a little bit trickier with this vehicle I think just to do with the pure speed of the, of the car or buggy or whatever you want to call it um, you could go flat out through that first corner just you had to get it absolutely right and on that occasion I didn't get it absolutely right and now we've, we've twisted the back suspension I knew at this point it was already going wrong and um, it was sort of bouncing about early on and the, the tree has caught us again the trees are pretty good at catching uh, <laughs> yeah I, I, I could tell that it was going wrong I just couldn't change anything I also love how I've broken the steering so much the wheels are going in opposite directions um, sure <laughs> I'm not sure how I've done that I'm not at all sure uh, again, I couldn't get the vehicle far enough over to the left, and we've had another roll over there, and then we've broken... I think we broke both the front wheels. In fact, the wheel... Oh, no, that... I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out which wheel it was that hit the ground. Um, yeah, we, may, we might have broke some wheels <laughs> on that one. Despite its very, very uh, large width, I guess you could say, it was still possible to roll the Scarab. A lot harder, though, when you've got a vehicle that's this wide. I very nearly saved that one as well. Uh, yeah, I was trying to be a little bit too greedy on the corner, trying to take it as fast a line as I could through there, and ended up so upside down. Uh, I did eventually get a run out of this. It took a little bit of time to get used to this <laughs> this buggy. It is it is very very quick. Uh, it can be a little bit twitchy, but nowhere near as bad as some. Uh, the width is the main problem with this. It is a huge vehicle. Uh, not lengthways. It, it just fills half the track. Very easy to get uh, get a corner wrong. 
Um, yeah, it deals with bumps very well. Didn't have, didn't really have the bouncy problem that I've had with the other two vehicles here. Uh, again, it can do if you get a little bit unlucky, but uh, on the most part, I, I didn't really notice it. We come up towards the first problem zone. Stay to the left. It's still, even with me staying pretty far left uh, on that one, it's still wanted to go over, and that's just to do with the <laughs> thing being so wide. Uh, down the next section, I was being a bit brave. I could actually be on the outside of the track for that corner. Couldn't have done that with any of the other vehicles today. They would have just been thrown into the wall or just wouldn't have stopped in time because the wheels would have all been in the air. Uh, I got things a little bit wrong. I was actually going a little bit too slow into that corner. I braked sort of where I where I have been doing uh, and it got stopped remarkably well. Getting into the next corner, or into the final corner I should say, and it dealt with that pretty damn well and then it is across the line and I couldn't stop it in time by doing a celebratory spin and it, it's entirely possible I may have broken well uh, yeah that's that's not an angle that a wheel should be at <laughs> really I love how the steering though is still in a way functioning uh, not massively functioning but it still moves the wheel anyway the scarab made it down to the bottom of the mountain uh, with, yeah, again, a relatively easy thing to drive off-road, which is not particularly surprising. And it is the Scarab that goes fastest. In fact, that's a pretty damn impressive time with a 113.9. That is going to take some beating, I have a feeling. The, the Toyota Celica goes faster than the D-Series pickup truck with a 119.7. Not by very much, though. The times are still remarkably close. And the six-wheel drive pickup goes into fifth with a 122.2. It, while it's a fairly good vehicle to drive, it's just it's not fast enough accelerating to uh, to be up with the likes uh, of the rest of the vehicles. It's quicker than the supercar though, uh, which goes to show that it is it's, it, it can deal with the bumps pretty well. So yeah, this course is proving to be quite an interesting test of the vehicles. The Celica, I'm actually a little bit surprised that that beats the the, the big off-road pickup truck. However, it did so. Yeah, um, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you have suggestions for vehicles, for mods you would like to see me use on this course, then please do let me know in the comments section. I'll have a look through, and my favourites well, may well be in a video at some point. I will only be using mods off the official BeamNG forums uh, for this series. Uh, however, until next time, goodbye.